as we go on. So here we are, meat and potatoes of Sunday morning. Um, this is the worship part two and kind of the, the why and an encouragement to make this such a priority in your life. And understand, um, you know, uh, I just, I'll give you this disclaimer. It does not matter if it's here. I just want you worshiping somewhere and it's for you. It's not for me. Now, last week, as I said, we started with the 95th Psalm and uh, it has, it, it doesn't have an author uh, accredited to it, though it sounded like David and it potentially is actually in Hebrews when Paul writes about it in Hebrews, um, they, they show that it could be. It's kind of like they, they attribute the 95th Psalm as they bring it up in Hebrews. So most likely it was David that wrote the 95th Psalm. Um, and this week we're going to read the 96th Psalm, which is accredited to David. And you're going to see there's a lot of similarities in the two of these as we start Psalms 96 with the NLT. It says, sing a new song to the Lord. Let the whole earth sing to the Lord. Oh, but I don't like new songs. Sing it anyway. It's important. Worship. Sing out your heart and worship. Verse 2. Sing to the Lord. Praise his name. Each day proclaim the good news that he saves. But wait a minute. I thought we only worship on Sunday. Each and every day. Sing to the Lord. Worship. Every day we are called. Verse 3. Publish his glorious deeds among the nations. Tell everyone about the amazing things that he does. But wait a minute. We can't talk about, we can't talk about God at work. We can't talk about it at school, right? There's a whole law of church and state. Whose law is that? Man's. And actually, if you understand it, it doesn't say that. It's falsely written. It's a misunderstanding. We are to praise, not just in church, not just in our home. Verse four, great is the Lord. He is most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods. Wait a minute. That word, people don't like that. God is to be feared. You ever had the fear of dad when you mess up? No, no, you don't. Not yet. <laughs> The fear of the Lord. We are to fear God. Verse 5 and 6. The gods of other nations are mere idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty surround him. Strength and beauty fills his sanctuary. We know the scripture for the heavens. Declare your majesty. Verse 7, O nations of the world, recognize the Lord. Recognize that the Lord is glorious and strong. Wait, this says that even the nations are to recognize the Lord. Ha. Huh. I mean, maybe, maybe it, it does matter if a nation recognizes God or not. I don't know, it's kind of scripture, seems important. Verse 8, give to the Lord the glory he deserves. Bring your offering and come to his courts. We don't need to bring an offering anymore. Jesus is the payment. Well, there's still an offering. Verse 9, worship the Lord in all his holy splendor. Let all the earth tremble before him. Wait a minute, tremble before the Lord? This goes back to like fear. This doesn't seem right. Verse 10, tell all the nations the Lord reigns. The world stands firm and cannot be shaken. He will judge all people fairly. Wait a minute. This worship part's talking about judging people. I mean, God judges them, but we have a responsibility in there too. That should scare a lot of people, and this should scare a lot of nations. God's going to judge him. And then all the way through the end, 11 through 13, it says, let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Let the sea and everything in it shout his praise. 
Let the fields and their crops burst out with joy. Let the trees of the forest rustle with praise. Before the Lord, for he is coming. He is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with justice and the nations with his truth. May the Lord add a blessing the reading of his word. So we just read through this psalm, 13 verses. It tells us a lot of pretty important things. Some things that people might not like to hear, might not want to recognize. But it says that we are to praise God daily. We're to praise Him everywhere. And that nations are to praise Him. God will judge the world. He will judge the nations. And I personally would not worry about any man-made law because the moment that I die, those man-made laws are done and over, null and void. But every law of God, the moment that I die, that I either adhered to or not, Well, that reckoning is for eternity. You know, when I do a funeral, the last words that I read, if it's a committal or if the committal writes, and that's the line where I say, this body we commit to the ground, to its elements, to its resting place, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Yes, says the Spirit. For they will rest for their labors and their deeds will follow them. How we live and what we do in this life matters. How we worship and how we respond to God matters because it will follow us into eternity. See, worship and the importance of it in your life is something that defines you. This kind of goes back into Romans chapter 8. I'll bring a little bit of that up in a couple places here. So we are defined by how we worship God. Your labors and deeds will follow you. So let me ask you, where is the importance of worship in your life? If you would look at all the things that you have to get done this week, where does worship rank? I'm not trying to call out anyone in particular. I'm doing my job in the pulpit of bringing this all to light to each and every one of us and even me because as a pastor sometimes, you don't worship, you give a sermon. Where is worship in your priority list in your life. We're going to switch over to the book of John, and this is Jesus talking in the fourth chapter, and understand that this is the response. Jesus has just went and he's met the woman at the well, and you know that whole interaction. She's a Samaritan woman, and it's the middle of the day, and he tells her, go home, go home to your husband. And she says, I don't have a husband. And Jesus like, that's right, you actually have five, and you're not even living with that guy right now. You see, Um, that judgment of God is going to be there. He calls her out. And then this is her response. Because as a Samaritan woman, she struggled with her identity and where it should be and how it should be. So this is her response in chapter 4, verse 20 through 24. And this is her saying, So tell me, why is it that you Jews insist that Jerusalem is the only place of worship, while we Samaritans claim it is here at Mount Jezerim where our ancestors worship. Jesus replied, Believe me, dear woman, the time is coming when it will no longer matter whether you worship the Father on this mountain or in Jerusalem. You Samaritans know very little about the one you worship, while we Jews know all about him, for salvation comes through the Jews. But the time is coming. Indeed, it's here now when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. The Father is looking for those who will worship Him that way. For God is spirit. So those who worship Him must worship Him in spirit and truth. Guys, it's not important where you worship. But it is extremely important that you do worship. This is not a sermon for us to pack the pews here. It is a sermon for you to worship God, to make it a priority. Jesus hits this hard. He's like, it doesn't matter where. It just matters that you do it. Make 
worship priority. Now I'm going to be real bold here in what I'm going to say. You might not like this. Thinking of how important worship is to you. Um, think about <clears throat> if it's Sunday and maybe you don't feel good. Not feeling very well, I didn't come to church. Maybe it's Sunday and it's your only weekend time and you've planned a vacation or you have family coming over so you don't come to church. We use Sunday and worship as if it's something that's convenient and it fits into our schedule. Let me ask you, do you move stuff around your schedule? Move it around because this is worship time, so I can't? Or do you worship because there's time in your schedule? You see the difference? Now, now let's switch this over. Now, I understand, of course, you know, many people work weekend package, rotating shifts, and I understand that. But let's take work as an example to something as, as a part of dedication. Um, how many of you have ever got up Monday morning and did not want to go to work? <laughs> uh-huh. Did you go to work? Yeah. How many of you got up Sunday morning, didn't want to go to church, and you thought, I'm not going to go? Mm-hmm. Let's take this one. Uh, you just really aren't feeling very good, but you don't have a lot of sick time, and you don't want to give up that sick time that you're banking so you can use it on a vacation, so you go to work anyway. But at church, oh, I don't want to give it to anybody else. Now, there's a healthy line there. I know I'm tiptoeing. You've got to be wise there. But you understand my point. How many of you have someone at work and if you're employed with people sitting next to you, be careful how you answer this. But how many of you have people at work that you cannot stand? Yeah, I was 500%. Yeah, that's, I was like, he works in a prison, okay? But Joe works with his dad. He was raising his hand too. This should be good at Wazika. But I work for myself and I don't like my children. <laughs> there you go. That's a good one. I'm a stay-at-home mom. Oh, sorry. But... But guys, seriously, like we can joke around it, but think about it. You don't like someone at work, but you go anywhere. I literally had a conversation with a guy three weeks ago. He's like, oh, I'm not coming because so-and-so. And I'm like, well, you're an idiot. I told him that. I'm like, you're not there because of him. We think nothing of going to work because we don't like someone. Well, we have to go to work. Well, I'm not going to church. They go to church there. If people say, I don't go to church because I don't like the pastor. Now, that's going to be more of you when I get done with the sermon today. But anyway, I don't, I don't go to church because I don't like the pastor. Um, I'm sorry, how many of you don't like your boss? <laughs> yeah. But you go to work. Do you, do you see, guys, what we make in a priority? And I understand, work is important. I mean, I've preached on work. It is, it is I mean... God's cursed a man. He says, you know, you're going to go work. You have to do this. Uh, work is good for the, the laborer, for sleep. Work is an important part of life. But we put so much priority on work, and work's purpose is to sustain us through this life, and that's it. Worship is to sustain us through eternity. Which one is a bigger priority? We will use a ton of excuses to miss worship that we would never, ever, ever use to miss work. So here we are today. This sermon, guys, is to help you realize your priorities in life. Worship should be at the very top. And I'm not telling you that it has to be here. I'm not even telling you that it has to be 9 a.m. Sunday morning. But I am telling you that you need to take in your life and say, end of story, this is my worship time, everything else fits in around it. Because that's how priorities work. The where doesn't matter, but the necessity of it in your life does. 
And you know, it's important for the people around you, especially parents, it's very important for your children to see that worship is important to you. I struggle with this with sports all the time. You know, I deal with it. We, we have our kids practice five times, six times a week, two hours a day. We move everything around our schedule because well, we got a game Saturday morning. And yet, our kids grow up worshiping athletics. And then they get to college and they're like, oh, I don't play anymore. My life has no meaning. We've taught our kids the wrong priorities. So people around us need to see that nothing comes in front of your time of worshiping God. No one, nothing. And our dedication to worship needs to be more than our dedication to our jobs. Now, I, I understand, like, if you work a weekend package or whatever, that's part of your job. I get that. I'm just telling you, make sure it's a priority then that you get your worship time in that week. Block it out. So I challenge you with this today. Make sure you're worshiping Jesus Christ daily and don't miss worship. Make it a priority in your life and let everyone else see around you your level of integrity that nothing comes in front of you in your worship. Guys, this sermon isn't for me. It's for you. Because as I preached last Sunday, who is worship for? It's it's for you to spend time with God and you're worshiping Him. So honestly, as far as it goes for me out of this sermon, if you take these words and implement them or you don't, it's no skin off my back. But it's a lot off yours. So I encourage you guys, make it a priority in your life. If you read through that Psalms and you see that we should be in fear of God, that every part of our life, we should worship Him and take it into every part, make it that big of a priority. Because our deeds and what we do in this life follows us in the next. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you uh, for your scripture. Lord, we thank you for David laying it out and saying that everything is called to praise. Everything is called to worship and that God needs to be feared above everything else. Lord, let us have, let us have this mindset that in this life we are without a doubt to prioritize worship to prioritize our time with you. And let us see that this life, this life is practice for eternity. And we're either practicing how to worship and how to be in a relationship with you and to spend time with you now, or we're practicing how to separate ourselves from you and not spend time with you. And our eternity is going to, well... Practice what you preach or you get what you put into it. So Lord, I pray for myself and each person here that nothing comes above worship in their time spending with you. Lord, we ask all this in your son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Hey, thanks a lot for taking the time to watch this video and uh, listen to the sermon. Um, But check what I'm saying. Get into your Bible, read the scripture that I preached on today for yourself, and uh, make sure that you're holding me accountable as I try to hold you accountable through this lens. Get into the Word of God, see what He has to say to you this week. And don't forget, give each other a little grace. See ya.